Whovians, it's been a rough year. Normally around this time we'd be watching the trailer about 50 times and counting down the days to that late August, early September premiere date, but not this year. This year, we don't even know when the spin-off class is going to be on. I mean, we haven't gotten even a trailer for it. In Doctor Who proper, full year between episodes, nothing until December 25th. However, in addition to binge-watching older episodes, and maybe even watching some classic Who as well for the first time, there are some new releases of some newer Doctor Who stories this year, albeit in audio or book format, so they might not scratch quite the same itch, but they're there. And there are some wonderful stories to be had while we wait. One of my personal favorites that came out this year, just a few weeks ago actually in the U.S., is the 10th Doctor and Donna Noble story, In the Blood. In the Blood, as I said, is a Doctor Who story set during the time of the 10th Doctor and Donna Noble, written by Jenny T. Colgan. Those of you who, like me, might be getting more into Big Finish with the newer series, you'll also know her as the writer of the Diary of River Songs, Boundless Sea, or the 10th Doctor Adventures, Time Reaver. My favorite. The basic premise of the story is pretty straightforward. When Donna decides she needs a break back home to visit some friends, the Doctor's left on his own and, true to form, finds some trouble to get into. This time in the form of the death of... internet trolls? He notices a strange pattern as he's looking into this. Uh, they're all over the world, but they've all been found at their computer desks. One of the deaths, as it happens, happened to be quite nearby where the Doctor and Donna are so he decides to go investigate, even though Don is not quite sure it falls within their purview. After running into a slightly strange man with sunglasses on, even though it's quite dark outside, the doctor's curiosity is piqued even more, and he decides to dive deeper into this mystery. After some, as the ninth doctor would call it, jiggery-pokery, the doctor is able to use Donna's phone to trace the internet of all the people who have been found dead at their computers, and as it happens, all of their internet has been coming from the same place, in South Korea. A link that might not mean much to someone else, but the doctor's pretty sure there's something going on. Something's in the internet, making people angry, making them scared. But what is it, and why? Now with the TV series, a lot of times they do have to keep a budget in mind, which means they can't have, you know, a ton of exotic locations. But with the books and audios, there's not really that problem because it's just, you know, it's being told through words or told through audio. So they can really take a huge scope of any setting, really. So in, in the blood, they start out in London, like most adventures, but then they go from London to South Korea, back to London again, and then to the rainforest of Brazil. My personal favorite part about that, though, due to an incident where uh, some hipsters set up a coffee shop in front of the TARDIS and refuse to move, the Doctor and Donna are forced to take normal transport, i.e., a plane to South Korea. <laughs> Don is delighted because she gets to fly first class, which is awesome to her. She is so excited. She gets pajamas. She gets all this fancy food. And of course, the doctor, being the doctor, just complains about how slow it is and how they won't give him his sonic screwdriver and all that stuff. It's just really funny to see him, like, you know, forced to be human, I guess, <laughs> in that way. Funnily enough, though, later on in the book, they take a train through the rainforest, and he's completely fine with it. Totally chill. Like, yeah, this is nice. But yeah, on the plane, he's just like, this is boring, it's cramped, I'm bah! And it's, it's, it's just funny. <laughs> and, ver and very true to the Tenth Doctor's character, I think. It really is nice to see a Doctor Who story that embraces the variety that can be found right here on planet Earth. Sure, paying for everybody to fly to those places might would probably get expensive pretty quickly um, if they did this with the the show proper, but it's it's just fun. So it's nice to see Earth's uh, diversity getting used in these other formats of Doctor Who stories. I also enjoy the fact that not only do you get the return of the Tenth Doctor and Donna Noble, but Wilfred Mott and Sylvia Noble also come in. I'm pretty sure it's impossible to hate Wilf, even given, you know... So it's always a delight to have Wilf pop up in these stories. And he shows up quite a lot, too. Uh, Sylvia also uh, pops up, which I really... She's not in it as much as Wilf is. Um, but it was really nice to see Sylvia, because you get to see a bit of a different side to her than what's really presented in, in the TV show, where, you know, she's kind of shown as overbearing and not in a good way. But it's really nice. There's a really sweet scene. Um and just some commentary on her her character 
that it's nice to see, you know, because, I mean, it's a completely different conversation, but I'm not a huge fan of how RTD treated mothers in his run of Doctor Who, but it was really nice to see Sylvia, I guess, humanized a little bit more rather than just being this lady who, when Donna comes home, yells at her, makes her feel bad about herself, you know? There's also mentions of the library um, from the Tenth Doctor and Donna, actually, and River Song, which I love because, as you know, Signs in the Library, Force of the Dead is one of my favorite episodes, um, and I just need so much more of the Tenth Doctor and River Song because it's such a fascinating dynamic to me, and I kind of feel like with the mentions that I've noticed in Jenny T. Holden's Tenth Doctor stuff that she's kind of going, like, let me do it, and I'd be totally fine with that because I love it too. And, you know, I don't want to get into too many spoilers, uh, more than I have to, but those of you who have listened to Time Reaver, which is the Tenth Doctor adventure that the author wrote um, for Big Finish, will be very happy to know that there's a nice tie-in to that adventure. Personally, I thought it was just going to be like, oh, there's, you know, a mention of what happened on Calibris or, or something. Um, but when I got to the part of the book where it all started to tie together, I did scream at my book a little bit. Um, so there's that. I really did fully enjoy this story. Um, there is just one tiny little nitpick that I have about it. It's little, though, and I didn't even really notice it until I got pretty far into the book. Now, Ten and Donna. So that means that this should be set around 2008-2009, um, give or take a little bit, because of the whole thing where the Ninth Doctor landed 12 months later instead of 12 hours later, so kind of technically... From that episode on all the current day ones are actually set a year in the future technically so yeah 2008 2009 um but suddenly everybody has smartphones or tablets or what have you and it's not a case of like the doctor showing up and not even really noticing that at first and then figuring out later something's gone wrong with time nor is it a case where donna just happens to pop up later in her own time um because nobody's rushing to, you know, tell her to get out of the house or trying or trying to figure out why she remembers all of these things. So the technology's a little bit weird. The technology timeline's a little bit weird. And it's a bit difficult to say that maybe their adventures just simply lasted a little bit longer than the original air date for uh, Stolen Earth and Journey's End, um, because even Rose, who is living, who is supposed to be living in a universe that's slightly ahead of our own, still has a flip phone, you know, uh, so the technology, like I said, is a little bit not quite contemporary with the time that it's supposed to be set in. Though, I mean, the thing with the flip phone might just be budget, because things tend to be on Doctor Who. I mean, I'll be honest and say that, you know, in real life at that time, I probably wasn't paying very much attention to what sort of phones people had, um, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't nearly at the level of saturation that is presented at in the book, which is closer to the level of saturations of smartphones that there are during our time. In the end, though, it really doesn't quite matter. I mean, like I said, I didn't notice until I was quite a ways into the book that I really noticed and thought about, like, wait a minute, why does Donna have a smartphone, you know, when we've seen her with the flip phone in, in, in the TV series? Um, you know, because sure, the a big part of the conflict in this book is dealing with cyberbullies, not cybermen, and internet trolls and the like, but out of control comment sections and internet trolls are really nothing new, unfortunately. It doesn't matter what the level of ease of access is to the internet, be it on something as small as a smartphone that you carry around with you, or on a computer or a laptop or what have you, it's just sadly how the internet's kind of been forever. All in all, In the Blood is a really great read. It's a very fantastic adventure with some really great character moments and some, you know, some very poignant uh, commentary on the internet and how we treat people, both on the internet and in real life. There's actually something that the doctor says in the book. Let me see if I can find it. I know, said the doctor, pushing up his glasses and staring out the window. I'm wildly out of fashion. They renamed basic species empathy as political correctness gone mad. And the world's never been the same since. I don't know why. So if you're looking to fill that Doctor Who void, which is probably going to just get stronger as we get closer to when the TV series would normally be coming back, I do highly recommend In the Blood by Jenny T. Colgan. It's got far-flung adventures right here on planet Earth, 
uh, a bit more insight into Donna's life, a slightly more unpredictable 10th factor than you might think. Danger, empathy, bits that will make you yell at the book to, for them to leave Wilfred alone, that might just be me. Escapes that involve apologies to stained glass windows, a new sweet in his own way, uh, sort of one-off companion for Donna, and just a lot more that make it really quite an enjoyable read. You know it's a great Doctor Who adventure when it doesn't take much to hear them speaking the lines that they're given in their voices or see their faces or their actions that are described. So if you've read In the Blood, what did you think? If you haven't, have you read any other Doctor Who novels recently that you really enjoyed? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for joining me for my first ever Doctor Who book review, everyone. Hopefully I will be bringing more of these to you soon. Bye!